And President Trump has signed the COVID-19 relief bill after a six-day delay. He'll avoid a government shutdown. We all will that way. The $900 billion bill that he signed, it includes $600 checks for Americans who earn less than $75,000 per year. It provides government funding through September 2021. Despite signing it, the president says he still opposes much of what's in the bill, and he's demanding more money be sent directly to Americans. ABC News political director Rick Klein and our White House correspondent Rachel Scott join us now for a bit more. Uh, Rick, let, let me just begin with you. Why did President Trump wait so long, storm around on Twitter about this bill, threaten to veto it, and then end up signing it? What, what, what did his delay accomplish there? Oh, well, that's an easy one, Terry. It accomplished absolutely nothing other than to delay payments to Americans uh, they're under unemployment and also these stimulus checks that uh, just the processing time is going to take a little bit longer. I, there really was no good reason. Uh, he was uh, having a fight with himself over this. This bill had been negotiated with his Treasury Secretary, with Republicans in the Senate and the House having a lot to do with it, voting for it overwhelmingly. Uh, and then came that late veto threat, which blindsided even his close allies. Uh, I think to some observers, it seemed like he was trying to make himself relevant in the late mm. stages of his presidency. He did have some real policy critiques in there, uh, but some of his objections were very curious because uh, they were things that matched things that he had asked for in his budget, uh, things that his Treasury Secretary said would be signed by the president. And ultimately, of course, he did sign the bill after getting absolutely nothing in terms of a concession uh, from ho House members or senators. And uh, Rachel, let, let me ask you that the House now is voting to increase the amount of those checks to $2,000 instead of the $600 uh, in the bill. So it's expected to pass the House, but do you think it's going to go anywhere in the Senate? Can people expect there's going to be $2,000 checks in the mail? Uh, no, definitely not. This stands little to no chance in the Senate. The only party that those $2,000 checks is gaining traction with is with Democrats. Democrats have been pushing that for months now. They have wanted those checks to be $2,000, but Republicans have fiercely objected it. So this will get through the House. Democrats will rally behind it. But in the Senate, that's going to put Republicans in a really tight situation if they are going to have to potentially vote on this, choosing between the, the leader of their party at the moment, and then also a bill that they supported. They wanted to keep those checks to a lower amount, so it is likely not to go anywhere in the Senate. But I will say this, Terry, too. You know, last night after this news came out and broke, I spent the evening looking through all of the statements from Republican leadership that were applauding the president for averting this government shutdown, for finally getting relief to the American people. But not one statement that I saw said anything about supporting $2,000 stimulus checks. And as you say, President Trump wants the $2,000 checks, and Democrats want these $2,000 checks. Republicans apparently don't. What's their issue with it? It's really the price tag for Republicans. They wanted to keep the overall price tag of this stimulus package and this relief bill and this government funding bill down. And so that's why you saw these smaller amounts of $600. I also think for some Republicans in the party, we heard from some like Pat Toomey, he, a senator, he was saying that he doesn't believe that every single American that makes you know just less than $75,000 should be getting a stimulus check. Uh, they said that some ways they believe it incentivizes people to not work. Uh, we do know that so many people at this point have lost their jobs because of the pandemic and are suffering. And so they're trying to meet Democrats in the middle here and say, okay, well, we're willing to give a $600, but take this wait and see approach to just see whether or not they're going to give any more after this. All right. And, and Rick, let's turn to Georgia for a second. Those all important runoff elections in Georgia. Uh, do you think this disagreement is going to impact those races? And what are the candidates said about the deal? Yeah, this is a curveball in the middle of that race, which is a week from tomorrow. The Republicans are both on record uh, being skeptical of this kind of big check. They are silent on the question of whether $2,000, uh, it should be the number instead of $600. They were skeptical even of the $600 number. And Republican leader Mitch McConnell in the Senate has blocked it from even coming up for a vote. On the flip side, both the Democrats, John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock, are on record saying they support this. So if it does come for a vote in the Senate in advance of the runoffs on Tuesday, 
it is an awkward one for these senators, who both of whom are, are on the air now bragging about this bill and their work to get stimulus checks in the hands of Americans. But now they'll be in a position of, of, of having to tow a party line that is breaking from the president. So this is all sorts of manner of messed up politically for Republicans right now, uh, and, and really a fitting coda to the, the Trump era for them to, to be at odds over these different parts of it. And now with this very critical election with President Trump coming to the state on the eve of that election next Monday night, uh, Republicans, frankly, don't know how to handle this. Uh, they, they know that they really can't win without the Trump base, but both of these senators in a very difficult bind. Well, and it does raise the question, doesn't Rick, of, of as you put it, uh, President Trump's relevance. He's a lame duck president, even though he doesn't want to admit it. Uh, and his effort to overturn the election has gone nowhere because the facts and the math isn't with him. The New York Post's editorial board is now calling for President Trump to, quote, stop the insanity, saying an op-ed that the president is cheering for an undemocratic coup when he should be concentrating on the, those elections in Georgia. Uh, the Post, that, the, that newspaper came out with the Hunter Biden story very loyal to Trump over the, over the years. So how significant is this coming from uh, this newspaper that endorsed Trump? I don't think it's going to change the president's mind, but I think it could congeal some conventional wisdom and give maybe license to more Trump supporters to back off of what are spurious claims that are, as you say, going nowhere. Think about uh, the sequence of events next week. The president will be on the trail in Georgia on Monday. Tuesday are those runoff elections. And then Wednesday is when Congress convenes to count those electoral votes. Pressure being exerted now even on Vice President Pence, who will be in the chair as the, in his capacity as president of the Senate to preside over that counting. Uh, people in the Republican Party, including a, a House Republican, Republican now suing Mike Pence and, and trying to, to claim that he has the power to reject certain states' electoral votes, that he has a responsibility to do so. Pence doesn't want a part of that either, and increasingly Republicans don't want any part of this. So the president uh, may be the last guy claiming that he actually won. We know a portion of his base tends to believe him when he says things like this, but you are seeing more and more even Trump supporters say, look, this thing is over. Electoral College voted as of Wednesday of next week. Uh, th that will be certified then by the House and the Senate, and then all that's, that's left is the inauguration of Joe Biden on January 20th. And with that, the spotlight of democracy moves away from Donald Trump, whether he likes it or not. Rachel Scott, Rick Klein, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.